where do you start when you're talking about NASAs? My name is Emilio, I've worked in tech for a long time and I've worked with NASAs for a long time. Network attached storages. And it can get boggling, the mind can boggle with what sort of NAS to get. What is the sort of configuration? What is the type? What is the performance? What is the speed? How much space do I need? Can I run apps? And there's a whole bunch more. And then there's brands. I mean, there are so many brands available that it's just like, where do I even begin? Hopefully we can answer at least some of those questions in this video today where we talk about all things the NAS, okay? Uh, an awesome device. And I would say that every single home, every single business should have a NAS of some type because they're just totally awesome. And it will save you a lot of headache if you ever lose data. And it makes it easy for anybody on a network to be able to access all the data from one spot. They are super cool. So we're gonna talk about that, but first, Tech with Emilio is where you are right here. Hey, I would love it if you did the subscription thing. Click on the button, click on the button, click on the bell. We release videos on all things tech. And if you click on the bell, you'll get notified when we are releasing videos. So do that. Let's now talk a little bit more about the NAS. Okay, now here's the deal. First thing is you've got to think about what is the purpose of this NAS? Because if you're gonna be using this in a workplace, it may completely change the actual type of NAS that you're gonna be getting. If you're doing it for home, same deal. What is a NAS? Well, a NAS is a network attached storage. Essentially, it's a device. Think of it as a really, really smart computer that is all about disk usage. So it's a little computer, it's got a CPU, it's got RAM, but it's also got a whole bunch of slots where you can put some hard drives inside of it and then convert this little computer into a network storage. Think of your computer that you have at home right now. You've got a computer with a hard drive inside of it. That's where your operating system is installed. That's where all of your data is installed. Maybe you have a USB hard drive that you plug into the side of it and that's all of your data. Well, the NAS is like that, but it's on the network. So devices across your home, across your business can access that data, all right? That's the first thing, a little bit there about the NAS. Now, the thing that's always very, very important and is think about where you're going to be in the next three, four, five years. Don't buy a NAS for what your environment looks like right now because your environment may look pretty small and then in a year's time you've run out of capacity, you've run out of space and you're now going to be a little bit confused around what do I do now because I don't have any more capacity, right? You've always got to think about that. So always, I recommend anyway, buy yourself a NAS that is gonna last you about five years. Buy yourself enough hard drive capacity that's gonna last for roughly around five years time because otherwise you're gonna run into problems later on, okay? That's the first thing. And then have a think about what do you want running on the NAS? Because the nice thing about a NAS is it's not like a USB hard drive that its whole purpose is just to store data. And yes, that is its primary purpose. But a lot of NASs nowadays have got fully fledged application stores, app stores. Think of your phone, think of your Apple TV, whatever at home, and you've got apps. You can go to an app store and you can download stuff. And that's what you can do on a NAS as well. A lot of these NASs nowadays, you can access the internet through the NAS and then download apps. So it becomes like an application server in a way. So you could be running all of your data on this one spot, but then you can also be adding all these little apps on there to do a whole bunch of cool stuff as well. What's your budget? How much are you willing to spend? Because that's really gonna determine how much of a grunty NAS, how much capacity you're gonna be able to put in there, all based on how much you're willing to spend on an as. Do you have a lot of money? Do you have a little bit of money? Okay. I recommend don't skimp out and get yourself a cheap, cheap NAS just because it's cheap, because then you may lose out on some of the cool features that you could get on a much more expensive NAS. But think about how much you're willing to spend, and then let's go and find the NAS that is right for you. Now here's another deal. You could go for a free option. There's this thing called free NAS, for example, where you just grab any computer, with a whole bunch of hard drives and you can just install free NAS software and it's free, hence the name, yeah, obviously, and it converts the computer into a NAS. So that's another option that you can go down to if you don't want to say go for a dedicated NAS itself. So have a think about that one. Now you've got to have a think about how many drive bays are you going to put in your NAS because a NAS can come in a single bay NAS, well single bay, right, where you put just one hard drive. That may be fine. You go for two hard drives. You can go once for four hard drives, for six, for eight, and they just get bigger and bigger from there. Now, the nice thing about a NAS is that you can configure the disks that are on a NAS 
to have failover built in. There's this fancy thing called RAID, where you can set up your disks in a way so that if one of the hard drives fails, you don't lose your data. Let's say you have a NAS and you only put one hard drive. Maybe you put a 10 terabyte hard drive in there. Great, you think that's fantastic. But then what happens if you're sticking all of your data into that one terabyte hard drive and that hard drive dies or the NAS dies and you lose data, that could be problematic. So that may be why you wanna go for a two bay NAS because if you have a two bay NAS, you stick two hard drives in there, and as long as you configure them in a proper RAID configuration, you can do what's called mirroring between those two disks. So then all of the data that is written onto one disk, essentially behind the scenes, it's copying that data to the second disk as well. So that if you lose a hard drive, not a problem. You've got the other hard drive there, and that gives you enough time to go down to your shop, buy yourself a new hard drive, and stick it into your NAS, and you're fine. It'll start rebuilding itself, and then you've got two disks again. Then you can go to a four or a five or an eight, depending on the size, whatever you want to go for from here. But I always recommend go for at least a four terabyte hard drive upwards. A four, a five, you can get a six, you can get an eight. Uh, don't go for anything smaller. And then you've got to think about how much your capacity you're going to want to go for, right? As I said, go for five years ahead. Think about how much you need right now. Right now, maybe you need 20 terabytes of storage. So you go and buy yourself your disks, you stick them inside of your NAS, and it gives you 20 terabytes of storage. Okay, in a year's time, you now need 30 terabytes, you're a little bit stuck. You can't really do too much just there. So you can get yourself something that's a little bit bigger, Think about growth for the next three, four, five years, you should be fine. Now the ones that I'm generally talking about here are desktop based NASs, where they're NASs that will, hence the name, it's a desktop, it sits on your desk, or it can sit under your desk, you can sit really wherever you want, right? As long as it's on the network, you're fine. But it's a smaller sort of form factor device. And then I talked about in a company, sometimes you can go for the rack based ones, which are much bigger. And if you've got a rack at home or at work and you wanna slot it into there, hey, great, go for it. Okay, now the next thing you gotta think about is the performance of your NAS. Is the thing grunty enough? Does it have the guts, the bits inside of it needed? Because not all NASs are created equal. You can go for some of the cheaper ones and it does it does the job. It gives you NAS access, you can put your hard drives out on the thing, may even give you some redundancy. But if the CPU is pretty lame-o, if there's not enough hard drive space, if there's not enough RAM, you may be in problems later on, especially if you're wanting to use the application features which I talked about earlier. Some apps are pretty power hungry. So let's say for example, you wanna make your NAS into a media server. You wanna be able to stream content out on your network. Maybe you wanna install a website and run WordPress. They need a bit of grunt, right? So ideally the better spec NAS, the better performance you will get out of it, right? Now, the other thing is uh, when we're talking about performance, is on the back of your NAS, you've got a ethernet jack. Now some NASs will come with one ethernet jack, some will come with four, some will come with two, okay? And they're gonna give you different sorts of options. But maybe think about whether you wanna go for one or two. I probably recommend going for a NAS at least with two. But the other bit is the performance of those network points themselves. What is the speed of the network point? Is it a gigabit, one gigabit ethernet point? Is it a 2.5 gigabit ethernet point. Is it a 10 gigabit ethernet point? Think about that sort of stuff as well. Oh, and just one little small thing is that uh, they can be a little bit noisy. It really depends on which NAS you go for. If you go for a much bigger one, like one of these rack based ones, they could be a bit noisy. Even the smaller ones have got fans inside of them. So if you're gonna stick it next to a spot where you're working, you may not like the noise. They run hot, they can run hot. Maybe they're gonna have a little bit of a bump on your electrical bills. Hey, you gotta consider all of these when you're picking the right NAS for you. Now, one other thing that's gonna be pretty important is your backups. Now, your NAS can be a backup device where you've got your computer, you've got USB hard drives, and you're just using your NAS to back up all your data onto it. And that may be great, and you can use it as a backup drive. But what if your NAS is the primary spot where you're throwing all of your data? And that may be great because that's sort of what you, why you want a NAS in the first place. But then what happens if your NAS dies? I'm not talking about a hard drive dying. If you've got proper RAID, you've got four disks in there and a NAS uh, hard drive dies, you can just put a new hard drive in and you'll be fine. But what if the actual NAS itself has a problem? What if your NAS gets stolen? It may happen, somebody could break in and steal it. What if your 
I don't know, there's a fire, there's flooding, and your NAS itself goes down, you lose it. Well, that would be bad, really bad. If that happened to me, I'd be shattered, absolutely shattered. But sometimes it may be good to buy two NASs. Buy one that's your main one, and one that is a backup one. And then you can set up some software between the two where all of the data is copied automatically, whatever, once a week, from one NAS to the other NAS. That way, if one NAS is dead, you'll be fine, you've got another one. And that second NAS, that backup NAS, you can give it to a friend or a family and you just keep it away safe and sound. Some other NASs will have a USB port. You may see a lot of these NASs have got these USB ports and you thought to yourself, what is that for? Well, what you could do is you could buy yourself a big as external hard drive and then make a backup of your NAS onto this USB hard drive and then you take it off to work, take, give it to a friend and you forget about it. All right, now we're gonna spend a couple of minutes, I don't think any more than that, just talking about the brands of NASs and which ones you may wanna be getting. I've got a whole bunch of different sorts of NASs. TerraMaster, ASUS Store, Synology, QNAP, I'm gonna say are the more common ones. You've got Netgear as well. There's all of these NASs that are sort of catered to home environments, to small business environments, small office environments, right? They're not really big corporate sort of devices. They're desktop devices. The quality on some of these NASs are better than others. Now, something that may be really, really small, maybe insignificant, is some of the more expensive uh, NASs of those brands that I mentioned, for example, QNAP and Synology, the actual casing is pretty good. It's metal, it's heavy, you can tell, you know when you like pick up something and you just go, if it's got some weight to it, you go, hey, that this feels good quality. Feels good quality. Some of the cheaper NASs are still good like a TerraMaster NAS. It's still a really, really good NAS and has a really awesome, awesome interface for you to be able to go and download apps and you can still do all of the RAID stuff and put lots of disks in there. And it's gonna be a fraction of the cost. The other thing is generally the bigger brands, Synology, QNAP, those ones have got a massive uh, support community behind them. So if you need help, if you need parts, there's a lot more people with those devices. So you're gonna be able to get better support, help, all of that stuff down the track. I'd recommend that you go to all the major brands that are listed before and just have a look at what are some of the features? What are the bells and whistles of each of these? What are the apps that are available for me to go and download? The build quality, that sort of stuff you've got to think about. And then the budget, because if you've only got a certain amount of money to spend, I'd probably say start off with a cheaper one, right? With a more budget friend, I shouldn't say cheaper, it's more of a budget friendly NAS because even the cheaper NASs are pretty good. They're, they're, they're still pretty good. If you've got a little bit more cash to spend, then you may want to go for a little bit of a bigger one, okay? But then you go into a whole different category altogether for another video where we talk about all the corporate -y sort of stuff, the rack based ones. You've got big ass brands like Dell EMC, you've got uh, NetApp and all of these really, really big NASs out there. That is more aimed at the corporate world. Hey, if you want to go a little bit crazy at home and you've got a whole bunch of cash laying around, go crazy and buy one of those because those things will just blow your socks off. They're pretty awesome. Here's my summary. If you're on a budget, go for a cheap version. If you're starting out, go for a TerraMaster, go for a Sioux Store type of NAS, right? I'm not sponsored by any of these brands, so don't worry about it. Either of those two will do the trick and they'll do the trick quite well. If you're wanting to get something that is robust, something that will last you for a fair amount of time, something that is good quality, Synology QNAP. I love both. I've used Synology a lot longer and I'm telling you, in work and in home, they're both pretty awesome. Synology, I love it and I've never had a problem with any of them. They're robust and those two brands, their support is absolutely awesome. So you're not gonna have any problems if you have any problems, if you get what I mean. We'll do a future video though where we're gonna be doing a side-by-side -side comparison, I think, on each of these NASs, on the brands, the features right over there. But hey, there you have it. Do the like, comment, subscribe, then click on the button on the bell. We release videos on tech. You click on that bell, you will be notified when we do that. Until then, I love tech, hopefully you do too, and we'll see you on the next video.